Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today has been quite an insane day. One of, if not the largest supply chain compromise in NPM history has just happened literally a few hours ago. Uh, luckily, the research team at Aikido Security was able to find this, report it, and we're getting on top of it now, but it's potentially pretty catastrophic. In total, 18 NPM packages were compromised that had a combined total of 2 billion weekly downloads, which is just absolutely ginormous. So in this video, we're going to explain exactly what happened, how they were compromised, how Aikido found it. We're also going to look at the malware itself, look at the ramifications kind of long term, what else this means and what's actually happened since, because unfortunately we have some not so great updates to this. All right, let's get into it. So what actually happened? Well, I'm going to start kind of a little bit back at the beginning. Three days ago, a new domain was registered. This domain was npmjs.help, not npmjs.com npmjs.help. This was then used in a phishing campaign that went out. This is a phishing email that went out and it was sent to a whole heap of popular maintainers of packages with the sole purpose of trying to compromise their account. Now, ironically, it was a security email telling them to update 2FA or MFA. One of those was a developer called Quick, Q-I-X. Quick's real name, Josh Junon, is an absolute legend in the NPM space and maintains hugely popular and hugely important packages. I want to give a shout out to Josh, though, quickly. A lot of people try and hide the fact that they've been breached. Josh, when we reached out to him, leaned into it. He's given several updates along the way. Mistakes happen. Stuff happens. How you respond is what's important. Josh did all the right things. All right, moving on. In total, 18 packages that were either maintained or co-maintained with Quick were compromised. This includes massive ones like Debug, which is pretty much used by every single NPM package. It has 350 million weekly downloads. Chalk, another big one, 300 million downloads. Strip and C with 250 million downloads, and you kind of get the picture. Why this is such a big deal is that these are what we'd call foundational packages. This means that pretty much everything uses them, and you wouldn't even be aware of if it uses it. For example, there's a package called Express, which has a dependency in it, debug. Debug was compromised, therefore, Express was also compromised. Now extrapolate this to pretty much everything. So the compromise, the scale of this is kind of catastrophic. It's almost at the level of kind of internet breaking. Now a very quick detour or question that you may have is how is this maintainer's uh, credentials compromised? Like didn't he have MFA involved? I thought NPM enforced MFA and all of that is true. There was MFA on the account, but there's multiple ways to get around MFA. So for example, if the phishing landing page was a man in the middle of attack, you can get the credentials and also get the MFA code from the victim. Another very likely scenario is that it was stealing session tokens and not just credentials. And what a session token can be used for is to bypass MFA and interact directly with NPM. So MFA isn't bulletproof in these situations. It does help, however, as we can see, it can be bypassed. So what does the malware actually do? Now, before I get into that, let me ask you a question. If you had just compromised most of the internet, what would you do? Well, whatever you think you might do, it definitely wasn't what this guy did. Well, it's not what I would do. What kind of happened here is what I would call kind of lazy malware. I'd say lazy malware because there's so much that you could have done. You could have had a backdoor to the entire world with this level of compromise. Instead, they stole cryptocurrency and as explicit. Explicitly, they were targeting browser-based crypto wallets. And with something this scale, essentially this malware sits silently in the background. It watches for traffic, and when it finds something that it thinks is related to a cryptocurrency payload or a cryptocurrency exchange, then it changes the wallet address at the end, obviously to the attacker's wallet. Now, the reason why this isn't that spectacular is this is going to affect a tiny portion of all of the, the the impact that this could potentially have and there's not anything particularly interesting in the malware like installing further backdoors or trying to get remote code execution on on multiple things it's in my opinion quite lazy which i i which i guess we can all be thankful for right so let's actually look at the malware itself here we have a package and in here in the code viewer we can see the code and it's line four that the malware is on. And you might be thinking, well, line four, just line four. Well, if we go around, you can see line four is actually quite long. This is a technique that a lot of attackers use just to keep everything on one line so that actually you can't see it 
uh, when when you just have the scroll bar open. If we actually open this in a code viewer, we can actually see that this code is actually quite long, it's heavily obfuscated. This is exactly what malware looks like. Now we can actually break this apart. We can go through and see what all of this actually does. But essentially the key parts are this. It injects itself into the browser. So it hooks functions like fetch or XML HTTP request and also attaches itself to wallet APIs, for example, window.ethereum. And then it ensures to kind of intercept this traffic, both web traffic and also the wallet activity. This is what it's trying to intercept. From there, it's kind of just scanning all this network packets, all this interaction for anything sensitive, particular, as I said before, kind of cryptocurrency wallet uh, information. So that's what the actual malware does. So what should you do if you think you've been affected? So this doesn't just affect kind of developers and software. This affects kind of pretty much all users of the internet. So if you're someone that has cryptocurrency, especially if you use browser-based wallets, you need to check your activity. Now, there won't be random activity there, but if you have made a transaction, you want to make sure that this actually went to the right place. So this is today, it's the 8th of September. So if you've done anything on the 8th of September, uh, you're going to want to double check that that has all gone to the correct locations. If you are a developer, then what you're going to do is make sure you're not running the malicious version. So in the links of this video, there's gonna be all the malicious versions. What I will say is they've all been removed, so they no longer exist. However, you could have upgraded them if you build your application during the window that they were open. Fortunately, we did detect it quickly, so it was only a few hours that window. From looking at the malware, I can say that it doesn't appear like the attackers would have been able to steal any environment variables from you. It doesn't appear that they're going to be able to kind of persist access into your infrastructure from this. However, out of abundance of caution, always revoke credentials uh, that are very important in this case, and always just monitor traffic for anything suspicious going forward. So what's the updates? What's coming up next? Well, unfortunately, this isn't over. It may be over for packages that belong to Quick. However, there have been a lot more compromises that we can attribute to the same threat actors. In the last hour, proto-tinker-wc was also compromised by the same threat actors. We can see the malware in here that is identical. This isn't such a big project, but it alludes to a longer thing. This means that this phishing email, as I talked about at the start, has gone out to thousands of maintainers. Obviously, Quick was the biggest one that actually was compromised so far. However, we are seeing that more have been. So we can expect that this compromise is going to continue. Well, that's the latest of what's happening here. The first link uh, is our blog, which will be updated dynamically with any more information that we have. I will also link some other resources down below if you want to extend your reading. Well, I hope the day gets better and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Do all that stuff.